Backbone applications often, but not always, use models that are synchronized with a persistent store using a RESTful API on the server. Backbone models provide an abstraction over the low-level API communication, which results in a cleaner and simpler code. For example, instead of you manually making AJAX calls to the server to fetch the data, you simply call the fetch method on your model. The model would then take care of making an AJAX call to get the data. Backbone models support three operations to work with the persistent store. Fetch to get the model from the server, save to insert or update the model, and destroy to delete the model. Depending on the method you call, Backbone will issue a get, post, put, or delete HTTP request. For example, fetch always issues a get request. Save, depending on the state of the object, makes a post or a put request. If the object is new, it sends a post request, otherwise it sends a put request. How does Backbone know if the object is new or not? Well, if it's been fetched from the server before, it assumes that it's an existing object. Otherwise, it assumes that it's a new object until it's saved to the server. And finally, destroy always results in a delete request. Now you may wonder how Backbone knows the URL of the API. Backbone relies on the URL root property of your models to construct the URL to the corresponding endpoint. If you don't specify the URL root and call one of the operations to sync with the server, you'll get an error that the URL is not defined. So in this example, we are telling Backbone that all our songs are located at forward slash API slash songs on the server. So if our website is hosted at example.com, that will translate to example.com slash API slash songs. Now let's look at some specific examples. In this slide, I'm showing how we can fetch a model from the server. So we are instantiating a song object with the idea one and calling the fetch method, which results in an HTTP get to slash API slash songs slash one. Here is another one. In this example, we construct a song object, we fetch it from the server, then we update the title property and finally call the save method. In this case, because the object has been fetched from the server before, it's an existing object, and as a result, Backbone will issue a put request to slash API slash songs slash one. Here is another one. Here we are instantiating a new song object, setting its property and calling the save, which will result in a post request to the songs collection. And finally, here is another example where we destroy a model, in which case a delete request is sent to slash API slash songs slash one. Note that by convention, Backbone assumes your models have an attribute called ID, which is used for uniquely identifying them. If you use a different convention, you can use the ID attribute to tell Backbone which property of your model is used as the identifier. In this example, we are telling Backbone that song ID should be used as the ID attribute. Note that all these methods are asynchronous and accept a success and error callback. The syntax is a little bit tricky and I have noticed many developers get stuck with this and think there is a bug in Backbone. So let me clarify this. Fetch and destroy are the easy ones. You supply the callback functions as you see in the slide. The save method, however, is a little bit different. With the save method, our callback functions are wrapped with an object that is the second argument to the save method, not the first one. The first argument is a hash of the attributes you would like to change. It's kind of a shortcut that lets you pass the attributes here and save them to the server. It's similar to setting them using the set method and then calling the save method. So I personally always set values using the set method and then call the save method with an empty object as the first argument, or you can also pass a null object. Note that if you accidentally forget to pass the first argument, your success and error callbacks won't be executed upon return from the server. So that's the tricky part. Okay, at this point, you should have a good understanding of models and how to work with them. Before proceeding to the next section, make sure to take the mini project that I've included at the end of this section. 
If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the discussions area. I'm here to help you. Thank you for watching.